keep in mind that each of you who are in the orientation this morning, you guys are perhaps going to different departments. You're going to different areas. So therefore, each of you are unique and different, but we all share some of the same common goals. Because we're going to have the same benefits. We're going to share, we want you to feel happy. We want you to feel comfortable. As a human resources specialist, you guys will need to, um, you guys will need to be able to get up and speak to the employees. You'll need to talk to them about benefits. For example, and I'll go out, and I'll go up to the floor with a bunch of the assemblers out there. And I'll say, all right, we want to try doing it this way. And we're going to run through the steps one by one and try slapping the computer together. And sometimes it's just as simple starting like with a puzzle at home. We all try. Let's say, like, let's say we want to build this computer. Now, now as an engineer's job, Ernest's job is to go out there and say, okay, we want to build these computers, but we want to do it in a timely fashion. We want to make it efficient, fast. We want to build them quick. We want to make sure it works. So we build it. So Gil Ernest will go out write up a process. He'll you know, number it like you see on a, like on a menu. One, two, three, do this, do that, do that. So what does that entail? Actually doing with this, how does that how does they go out there and say, how do I build this with this piece of paper? So we go out there, my job is to go out there and actually show them how to do this step by step. For example, to install customers' drives. We want you to cable it certain ways. As well. And that starts look more like a general computer you see in a store, right? Something you see on TV, right? It's starting to look more like it. You start it off with just this case and a bunch of parts on the table. As Ernest's job goes, to be an engineer, to write up a process on how to put these things together, you notice that it starts to fall pieces, just like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Another aspect of engineering, integration of parts, or how how do things work together on a computer? Now, Ernest himself, I don't think, deals with that aspect as much. We have, like, like he was saying, a test engineering department as well. Ernest's group will design and figure out how to put the computer together. And then we have there, let's hope it pray it works, let's send it to the person. And the person gets it and turns it on and says, hey, I'm, this ain't working. Our jobs are to design, develop, test, and then send this process that we run through over and over again. We wanted to make sure that the QC technicians, they went and they did their job. Uh, if there's any uh, expansion drives, we run tests on them to make sure that they're running properly. Uh, we check to make sure that all the parts are inside, compared to the work order. We check to make sure that all the labels are right. And especially on the back of the case, check to make sure that all the labels are right, especially when it comes to the UL label, UL listener, and then they have another one.
So we developed a special scar for those folks called our workshop brochure. Now this is a different piece of collateral. It's a lot different from our other skin. Um, also this year, um, and it still is in our family today. We didn't have an option to hide one of our employees. We didn't have an option to stay home. So one of the graduation gifts that we met in high school. What do you need to pack your things in? Suitcases. So we all were given luggage. That was a given. And even today, we still when you do take this degree, you know, when you just you said you were going to write that thing before you degree, what would you take it in? Um, me personally, I would have looked at a four year degree in disaster management. And that's um, such a thing in yes. different college, and how do you find out what college to offer that? Um, most of the time, you talk to your guidance counselors, they usually have like the big catalog books of all the different colleges. So, I think it's time to change classes. Thank you very much for your interest. Have a good day. Having the knowledge of knowing how to make the product and the equipment, um, and then having the knowledge also as a product engineering that we give uh, consumers uh, to fill out what problems they may see that will help myself or the sub lines, which affects my lines. So, some of the background that a manufacturer supervisor is required to have uh, is and made up a set of plans. And the plans are like this. <coughs> I guess I can turn the other way, but they're long. They're a little bit ungainly to handle, the blueprints are. And it has shows the building on the site, shows the plans, and basically shows all the things that the team of people in the field need in order to go and build that house or that building, or that grocery store. And it tells them how to put it together. Now it's gonna be pretty cool because you make the models and you make the plans, and then a whole bunch of people go out in the field and for a house or a smaller building, maybe building out the inside of an office space, it's gonna be about three months. For a building about this size, or a school, probably more like two years. And they're going to go and do that, and then it's like, you walk in there and there's the stuff you drew. And someone's made it up, it's gonna stand there for years, are going to go into your space and they're going to see just the way that you laid it out for them. And it's pretty cool. That's one of the things that I like about the job. Um, especially for interiors, if you do an office space, maybe they're going to have this big uh, conference room with all this lighting and really cool uh, colors and stuff like that on the wall and you draw all that up. They go up and they spend a lot of money and a lot of time making sure that it looks just the way that you wanted it to look. And uh, that can be pretty satisfying. Um, once you've done the plans, and they're out there working on the job, you also have to answer questions. And that can be very interesting too. You go on the job and you are the person who has the answers because you know how you want that building to go together. But sometimes things aren't exactly the way they thought they were going to be. So I took 
from a camera around with me yesterday, things I was doing. Uh, here's some examples. Here we are loading the gel, not just the flat gel, but one of the subjects that are really important is math for one because you, you use a lot of math with computers. English, don't expect to be able to write a program and then you know work on it for five months and you're, it doesn't work. You're troubleshooting it, you're troubleshooting it. Spell oh. check, you change that question. Okay, the salaries. Salaries start anywhere from a beginning person to what? But the good point is DC in Washington DC they're starting off with what I do right now $120,000 a year. Wow. Yeah, we all have feelings, don't we? We all have feelings. I think I did a great job, and someone gives me a $10 tip for a two-week tour. It hurts. She didn't give enough commentary. Or, I didn't like Rosemary. She talked all the time. Where's the happy meeting? You see? So, that's the kind of thing that happens. Uh, missing your family. But you know what? That's where technology comes in. I travel with a laptop. We're required to have a laptop. So should you learn about computers? Yes. And you know what? I keep in touch with my friends and family. Most of them have computers almost every day via email. A credit card, you put it right in the credit, right in the phone. This million, million pesetas. I got to account for that with my company. Well, doing what in the dark? Reading in the dark? It's an adjustment, but the thing is, I learned a lot of responsibility. I learned how to live my own life, and then you had guys that mentored you and adjust and help you progress along the way. Because you join the army, you're in the you're in basic training. You're going to do that for eight weeks. They're going to teach you all your basic. What is a job that you you would like to do? Any job, any kind. Okay. Believe it or not, in the Army, they have the best problem you can think of <coughs> that is out there. They have it in the Army. And it, see, instead of, uh, that's an opportunity for you. Your parents. You, you, you're on the right track. Yeah. When your eyes are pointing, both eyes are pointing in the same place, you see one. When they're not pointing in the same place, the center of your clear vision is not used. Other parts of your eye, the retina, are used, and that stimulates the double vision. You can also do it the other way. You can look at the coin, and all of a sudden you have two fingers. Now I'll pass the quarter around. Maybe I'll get back. This is a good example of a convex lens. This is the lens that we, you saw in the video when the uh, optometrist had the big front of the thing in front of his face and turned it like this. That's called the direct up downscope. And with the direct up downscope, you can use a large pointing optic plus lens. Place this in front of the patient's eye with that light that he had in front of his eyes. You can see right directly into the back of the eye of the retina. You pass that around and you feel it. Don't worry about getting fingerprints on it. I'll clean it off. You feel what a convex lens looks like. somebody open it to get his brain? Sure, you would cut them open and to get their brain, the first thing you'd run into is this heavy bag. 
This bag is the Dura model. Do you know what the word durable uh, durable means? Tough. Tough. Nobody ever says dad. They always say mom. The Latin word for dad, the mother, is uh, mater. This is the Dura mater. What does that translate into? Reflect that back, and then you can go into the brain and repair it in whichever way you want. Now, you didn't have your helmet on, and you ruptured these blood vessels that are in the Dura mater. What if you ruptured these blood vessels in the Dura mater? And now you have all this, well, we don't call it the big window. You know what we call it? The frame and magnet. What does frame and magnet mean? The window goes south through the big. If there's pressure here, it goes south through the frame and magnet. What's going to happen? You're going to be dead. So what does the neurosurgeon do to take care of that problem? This is physics now. What does the neurosurgeon do when you have a bleed on top of the dura mater? What do you need to do? Relieve the pressure. What do you do? You put a hole in the head, a tiny hole in the head, to relieve the pressure, right? That's the first thing you want to do, is relieve the pressure. What would be the best solution to treating that child who injured his brain or her brain because they were on a bicycle without a helmet? Go in and have a fancy neurosurgeon repair that damage? What would be the smartest thing? What's the smartest thing for somebody who's going to have potentially a brain trauma? Prevent it first. Wear a helmet. Wear a helmet, right? You guys wear your helmets? No. All right, ask me some other questions. I have no question. All right. <laughs> this is a creative and active mind. That's a mind that needs to be reinforced. Come on, come on. All right. Um, I heard about all this metal plate stuff, you know, that you put in your head and you put over a brain or something like that. Maybe. Well, if you cut a hole in the skull and you need to place that, fix that hole. Well, what's the metal plate for? Just to cover the hole. Just to cover the hole. That's all. Are you going to receive radio signals from space? No. No. Nothing like that. <laughs> nothing like that. Okay, when you sleep, is your brain no, quiet? You can listen to the radio. And At some stages of sleep, your brain is more active than it is when you're doing exercise. Heard Nancy.